All right, uh, you're all very welcome to my talk on the print department. Uh, my name is Andrew Folan and I'm the head of the print department, which is one of several departments within the School of Fine Art. And the purpose of the talk today is to enable you to understand the different options that are open to you um, within the School of Fine Art. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about print. Uh, so print basically is uh, a method or a number of a range of methods, a number of possibilities that are open to you um, in terms of uh, generating images, generating your ideas, um, developing your ideas through printed means. And we use a range of possibilities going right back uh, over 400 years um, to the, the very origins of print. and. Um, uh, still uh, uh, methods like etching and engraving still used by artists today um, where uh, the, the, the particular qualities of these media are seen to be um, valid um, for artists um, regardless of, of what their, their subject matter is. So we also uh, use the most up-to-date computer uh, methods, uh, digital methods, um, and so on, photography and so on um, in the print department. So I'm just going to give you a very, very quick uh, look uh, at the department here. This is the workshop, three students working away busily with their masks on. Um, and then I'm just going to give you a 30-second uh, history of print, uh, shortest history ever. Um, so going back over, as I say, Four or five hundred years. Um, one of the some of the the key uh, figures in art, all using print. Uh, Rembrandt, uh, you know, dealing with the the linear uh, contrast of chiaroscuro. Um, Goya, uh, the grainy, granular, aqua tinted plates that um, you know showing the the, the comic the. Uh, the um, uh, historical situation in Spain at the time and commenting on that, and Picasso, the fluid line and the beautiful eloquent drawings. So jumping forward significantly, Louise Bourgeois, um, uh, dealing with the spider, an iconic image for her, this is an etching where her hair turns into a spider. Um, she said the spider reminded her of her mother always busy creating and busying around. So um, Kiki Smith, uh, American artist, um, dealing with uh, uh, creation and procreation and uh, many other issues to do with uh, contemporary life. Uh, McLean Thomas, a beautiful example of screen printing, the screen printing workshop in the first photograph that I showed you there. Um, so the, uh, the, the ability to make strong iconic images and disseminate them, multiply them and disseminate them is a particular feature of print and what we offer in the print department. Um, we're also very interested in the culture of print and how um, artists can use existing printed material. John Stesiker, British artist using postcards, and juxtaposing them with photographs here, the, the stony cliff face in the postcard uh, superimposed over the, the couple um, who could be uh, arguing or being passionate, we don't know, but the stony cliff face has all these uh, implications of um, pending difficulties between them. So it's, it's the simple uh, use of existing printed, existing printed matter. Here is an example by Joseph Cornell, and this is very interesting because um, is an example of the, the idea of the image reality. So here Cornell is cutting out the parrot, the green parrot, uh, cut, out, cut out and mounted on a backing and superimposed inside a box full of objects. So it's this curious mixture of realities, the image reality cut from a magazine or a book, um, superimposed with objects um, and the, you know, the ability to create um, uh, dioramas or tableau where um, these uh, different elements combine and come together to create um, different uh, layers of reality. 
Um, of course, print because of, of the fact that it's uh, um, the ability to to uh, make many many copies and to um, disseminate them is an ideal uh, conceptual medium for many artists. And uh, Felix Gonzalez Torres here. This is a, an, an exhibit I first saw in the Ludwig Museum in Cologne. And uh, there's a pile of little booklets sitting on the floor and you walk into the gallery and you, you wonder, you know, what are you supposed to do? And the whole idea is that you pick one up and you take it away with you. So um, Gonzalez uh, Torres to talks about these as his passport series. And the whole idea is that he sees the artwork as an identity and um, he invites the, the viewer or the visitor to the museum to take the artwork away with them and disseminate it across the, the world. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it, it sits there and it's, it's a totally interactive sculpture. You take it out of the museum and it exists uh, in all different locations at one time. So each little booklet is just a, a map of this, a photograph of the sky with one bird passing through it. So a very evocative, evocative very simple image. And the ability once again to produce these, um, these little booklets relatively cheaply and um, to uh, enable their, their dissemination. Uh, so this is one of our uh, print students and uh, she's working on um, images taken from a uh, ceramic plate. Um, this, this particular design known as the willow pattern, which came to Europe uh, through China, uh, tells the story of the emperor's daughter and uh, a story of unrequited love. And uh, it's a very, very strong evocative pattern. And um, it used this um, pattern, which is normally seen on ceramic um plates or, or uh, pots or whatever um, and she used that uh, on a, a hefty um, courier's motorbike so she took the fairings off and she had them um sprayed in a kind of uh, porcelain white um, coating um, and then she used screen print to print the uh the willow pattern onto uh, transfer material and then transferred that onto the the uh, what is apparently or ostensibly a porcelain bike. So you've got this strange macho character of the bike mixed with the delicate sort of uh, romantic notion of the ceramic willow pattern. One of the um, uh, most potential aspects of print is the ability to uh, evolve an image and um, retain the various states of the development of, of the image. And um, print is, is unique um, in, in, the, um, in its ability to do this. In fact, it's the only analog method where you can do this. Obviously with digital art or digital generation, you can uh, save your various states of your, your production um, and go on. Uh, evolving the idea as you please, but with, with print, it's an analog method. So every time you, you make a print, you can put one aside and then you can use the, the matrix. In this case, it's a, a copper printing plate, so it has been etched. And um, so the matrix gives rise to the printed image and the matrix itself can go through a series of transformations. Um, and at the same time, you can take a print off the plate at any stage and keep one um, as a, a, a record of the development, the transition, the transformation and the progression of the image. So uh, we tend to combine the most traditional processes such as etching, uh, which, is this, which is how this is made, um, and then make um, digital animations from the, the drawings. So uh, it's taking a, a method which is maybe three or 400 years old um, and using it with the most up-to-date technologies, digital technologies to animate um, and introduce a time-based um, uh, fourth dimension to the subject matter. So all of this is done with aquatint and lion etch. So the plate is repeatedly etched and reworked 
um, obliterated by adding the aqua tint, scraping back, burnishing, doing all of these processes that we do in print, which um, enable the transformation of the plate. So uh, another example of um, basically the, uh, the, the, the combination of, of different methods in print. Here we have uh, a combination of um, lino cut, um, etching and digital images all in one. So uh, the, 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 um, the printing paper printed with the digital uh, image of the, um, the sofa, the two the two figures and then the uh, they're effectively dressed in the linear uh, textured markings of the lino cut plate and then superimposed with an etched detail on top of that so um basically the here's an example of the plate being being cut with, with a, um, a sharp um, gouge and the the, the quality of the of the um, the, the plate is uh, very very particular to the nature of the, of the subject the sort of jazzy quality of the the guitarist um, and the, the flowing marks of the the cutting implement um, complement the the subject matter So another example uh, of, of the, you know, the layering and the combining of images here, the, um, uh, the, 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 the line of cut of the, the figure holding the gun um, is partially obscured by a printed fabric blind, which rolls down over, over the layer. So it's this notion of the different layers of reality combined and the ability to interact with the subject matter. We also work very large. You can make screen prints um, pretty much as large as you wish. These are eight, eight foot by four or whatever that is in meters, 2.5 meters by um, two, uh, by two meters or whatever. So um, these are printed onto plywood and suspended in the gallery. So in terms of digital artworks, um, here's an example. It's called, uh, the, this, this process is called 2.5D. You're all familiar with what two dimensions are. You're all familiar with what three dimensions are. Uh, 2.5D is halfway through, halfway in between 2D and 3D. So how this is done is basically the student um, took a whole lot of images from medieval uh, books and manuscripts um, photocopied them, or uh, scanned them, and um, imported them into a digital program where uh, they could be animated. And um, she's dealing with the subject of the um, the Eighth Amendment and uh, a particular um, narrative about a nun who got pregnant. So. Um, you know this 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 method of this this uh, method of using existing images um, and reanimating them for a particular purpose is a very very useful political method um, which is enabled through this two point five D animation in print. So these are uh, large, very large monitors set behind um, cut out um, Gothic style arches. Uh, kind of so in combination of installation and digital animation. So um, we're also very interested in drawing in uh, the print department. Most of the um, 
etching and so on that we do uh, starts out in some shape or form as a drawing. Um, so this is a student who began to concentrate more closely on drawing and uh, he was very interested in sustainability and um, primitive uh, machines for um, capturing wind energy and uh, so on. And uh, he's, he's in a kind of um, humorous way referencing uh, the historic uh, machines and the historic use of, of animals. There's a, uh, an ox cart here on the left. So this is a trestle table and he's got his little sculptures mounted here on this table and he's got a, a um, series of drawings and the, the drawings and the sculptures are, are related in the sense that the, the subject matter is picked up and uh, dealt with in both two and three dimensions. So um, the, at the back here you can see a drawing on the wall and when you look at it up close what it is is it's, uh, it's actually the um, the red square in NCAD and that man coming out of the doorway of that little uh, cabin is the director at the time and um, this is Bernard and he is uh, baking some some cakes and um, the college is a bit short of money at the time and he, he's out there he's uh, selling these cakes to raise some money so it's a very humorous um, treatment of the, the particular subject. So on the left, you can see in the drawing, he's got the, uh, the ox uh, or the cow in this case being milked, milked and he's got the ox cart on the right. So what he's doing then is he's taking um, the subject from the drawing and he's making the little sculptures from the subject or perhaps he's making the sculptures first and the drawings later. Uh, we don't know, we can't tell from looking at the exhibition whether uh, the, the drawing came first or the sculpture came first. But what is sure is that the, the subject is being dealt with in both two and three dimensions in a way that um, enhances the overall effect. It gives the drawing a certain reality and it gives the, the object another reality. So, uh, People often say, well, what do you do with your, your degree in, um, in print? Um, well, many of our, our graduates leave the, the department and they, um, they join print workshops or studios where they can make their, um, their artworks and exhibit them and hopefully sell them and make some money and make a living that way. Others uh, go into teaching or other subjects. Uh, this is a graduate, Terry McInerney, who um, went to uh, the, worked in the, in the White Cube in Bermondsey in London for a while, and she's currently the manager there. And I like to believe that some of the skills that we taught her in the print department enabled her to take on that uh, very demanding job. So uh, the print department is staffed by lecturers who are active practitioners themselves. When we're not in the college teaching print, we are in our workshops or in our studios um, producing artworks. So uh, here's an example of Aoife Scott printing some etchings, rapidly sped up, of course. Um, she doesn't work that fast, but <laughs> um, just to give you some idea of what we get up to when we're not teaching print. So uh, if you want to express your ideas in an effective evolutionary and versatile manner, you may wish to consider print. Um, so my name is Andrew Follen and I'll be very glad to answer any questions you may have about the department starting now. So, will I stop sharing? Um, Do you have any questions? When there are no questions, it's a sign of one or other 
it's a question of uh, either you 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 learned everything you wanted to hear, or else you're totally confused. So <laughs> I won't know until you say something. Anyone want to open up the discussion? Um, yeah, I have a quick question. I'm in second year in the diploma. And if I was to go full time um, next year, mm -hmm. uh, how much experience would I need in print before going into third year print? Well, that we would really, I, I can't answer that unless I, 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 if you wanted to come to the department and meet me and show me some of the work that you're doing, um, then I'd be able to tell you, uh, you know, how prepared you are, are already to go into the department. Um, so it would really depend on the particular student's uh, experience and, and ability at okay. this point. Yeah. So, you know, um, in theory, it's possible, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it has ha happened before. Many, many students have come, well, not many, but lots of, lots of students have um, come into the department from the diploma. And um, some of them have, have uh, found it a very, very easy transition. Others, perhaps a little bit more difficult. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that, that facility is open to you and you're very welcome to uh, come and talk to me about it. And, you know, maybe at this point, I could give you a few uh, guidelines as to how to um, prepare yourself more for that in the future. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, so the, the, the department is there in the granary and, and if you, uh, you know, if you want to make an appointment to come in, you can do so as well. So you could email me. Um, uh, my name is Andrew Folan, as I say, and my email address is Folan, F-O-L-A-N, and then A, Folan, A at uh, staff dot ncad.ie so if you if you have any particular queries and you're you're thinking of applying um and you're not sure that uh of um what uh, any particular aspect of what i've been talking to you about you can just email me and i'd be very glad to reply to you sorry andrew there's a few questions there in the chat oh in the chat yeah yeah oh, just, are they? Let me just see. the chat there at the bottom you'll have a couple the in chat. there there's a chat uh, just at the end of the screen there you see I can call them out there too if you can't. Use your mouse. You have participants and yeah, I've got it. Okay, here we go. Um, is the print is print used in the first year? And it is. Um, in the very first year on the course um, is is a general um, introduction to art and design and towards the end of the first trimester you begin to specialize into either fine art or design and then within fine art as you you go through the uh, second trimester you begin to specialize into um, painting sculpture media print or other subjects so um, yeah you would be using print towards the end of the first year and then the next one is, uh, is the print in first year used in fabrics? Uh, well, we, we print on paper mostly in the print department, um, but we also screen print onto um, plywood, um, directly onto walls. We, we do what's called vertical screen printing, where we, we use the, the squeegee to print upwards and print images directly onto walls. Um, we also print onto fabric, but we don't print onto wearable fabrics. So in the sense that um, the, the way we use print and the, the, the particular methods that we use are designed for um, uh, art, the creation of artworks, not, not clothing. Um, there's a separate department in 
the in NCAD uh, are a separate um, section of a department where they do screen printing on fabric for the purpose of wearing that fabric. So that's a, it's a it's a slightly different process. It's it's very similar, but using different materials and different inks. But uh, we we specialize in printing on paper and. Um, Ex exhibition surfaces, so an artworks specifically rather than wearable um, print. Um, how would students be assessed in the print department? Considering a lot of the works produced are displayed through different formats, like an installation. So, um, you know, we have very rigorous assessment uh, guidelines, and, uh, you know, when you join the department, we provide you, we furnish you with the uh, the, um, the, the module descriptors and the learning outcomes so you know what you have to do and how you must do it um, in order to pass or in order to achieve a good mark. Um, so uh, we, we assess people, uh, we pass, assess the students in, in you know, the most uh, appropriate way for the, for the work they're, they're taking on. In other words, we encourage you to produce individualistic work and whether it's a, an, an etching that's to be framed or an installation where um, it's a combination of uh, perhaps projection and print or whatever. Um, we, uh, you know, we, we, we apply the, 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 the correct rubrics when we're assessing, looking at the, looking at the work and, um, you know, you, you'll get a fair assessment regardless of what your approach is. It's not, it's not that there's a, um, uh, 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 how, how style or um, it's not that there's a, a favored method. We're open to helping students to find their own method of expression, the most appropriate means of expressing the particular ideas that they're dealing with. So um, we will guide you to uh, choose the right method. And once, once you choose that method, we will, um, we will assess it by the correct and appropriate rubrics for that method. Is print used on hard surfaces like tiles and flooring? It can be used on any, any surface, Once, particularly screen printing. You can screen print on anything flat. Um, I've seen people screen printing onto the human body. Um, if somebody almost like a printed tattoo. Um, so yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, hard surfaces like tiles, Flooring, um, we yeah, we print on anything and everything. So that leaves me with a minute to go. So what will I say for the last minute? <laughs> Any more questions? All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and. Um, I hope you come to NCAD and that you enjoy your time with us. Thank you very much.